Hello, so I'm back. Flo is running around tabs. So let's continue because we had a little bit of, uh, we're a little bit late. Let's, uh, we're going to listen to Philip Arto now. Uh, he's a security researcher working for GoSecure. His research is focused on web application security. His past work experience includes pen testing, secure code review, and software development. He is the author of a widely used Java static analysis tool, OWASP, Find Security Bugs. He is also a contributor to the static analysis tool for .NET called Security Code Scan. He built many plugins for Burp and Zap proxy tools, um, including Retire GS, Reissue Request Scripter, CSP Auditor, and many others. Philip has presented at several conferences, including Black Hat Arsenal, Sector, AppSec USA, ATL SecCon, NordSec, and 44Con. He's also a very uh, invested volunteer for NordSec and for the CDF. So let's give a good round of applause to Philippe Arto, uh, who's going to talk about Unicode vulnerabilities that could bit or bite you. Hi, everyone. So hi, everyone on Twitch or uh, seeing the stream uh, later. So uh, I'm going to talk uh, today about uh, security related to Unicode or security risk implication uh, with Unicode usage in a web application or a system in general. So without further ado, I'm going to start my slides. So as you have seen, uh, the title of uh, my presentation has a fun, but also a unicode uh, character that is also aimed at testing a uh, system from conferences. So, and uh, so far, uh, NordSec is supporting unicode uh, greatly. So uh, that's pretty good. Uh, we'll see later uh, what these type of characters are about. Uh, the main topic of this presentation uh, is transformation that are standard from the Unicode from Unicode that can add a security issue. So first, we're gonna go through a basic history of uh, encoding, just to see what um, solution Unicode is trying to solve or what problem is trying to solve. Uh, normalization and case modification will be transformation that have, can have security impact in your code or library that you're using. Uh, we're gonna see also that Unicode can be used by pen tester or uh, bug bounty hunter uh, to bypass WAF or any type of filter. We have also two other sections that are uh, maybe as important, but less technical uh, that I'm gonna go quickly through. Uh, so homograph attack will be a uh, usage of special character in Unicode to do um, uh, basically to fool user with clinical domain. And uh, data integrity is also an important uh, topic related to uh, loss or partial loss of data. So who am I? I already got a great introduction uh, about me a moment ago, so I'm gonna go through quickly. So I'm working for GoSecure as a security researcher in uh, application security. I'm also a volunteer at NordSec, so I'm often doing uh, CDF changes uh, depending on the year, but I'm also uh, helping with the website of NordSec. So uh, before we start, uh, I'm going to go through a uh, basic introduction of encoding. Um, the first uh, type of encoding that, um, not necessarily the first one, but one of the early one was ASCII that emerged in the early uh, 60s. And the way ASCII worked, it was pretty primitive, but uh, work, it was pretty simple. Every byte was one character. So when you need to write a text, also think about text file, but maybe a method that you need to send or anything that you need to store. Uh, in ASCII, one byte equal one character. And the way um, the different uh, bytes are attributed, because one byte can have value from a zero to 255. So the first 32 values are a control character that would be used to uh, basically uh, interact with uh, maybe the computer or other program. So think about no character, uh, bell for the console, backspace, and the file, these type of character. So these are non-printable character. Then we'll have a standard uh, character set, so Latin character, 
Uh, so every character from the alphabet, uh, uppercase, lowercase, but also uh, numeric values and some uh, punctuation. Then we'll have the ex extended uh, character set. And those are aimed at covering special characters in, uh, in text. So if you are writing maybe a French text or a Spanish text, you'll have accent uh, character in your text. And the idea is that all accent uh, characters will be stored in this section. The thing is that we cannot store uh, all accent character of every language, so we'll need to do some choice. And with this limitation, a uh, system uh, around the 60s and 70s have uh, implemented different uh, extended char sets. And these were called copage. Uh, copage will be uh, basically variation of the second half of uh, the assigned byte. So any character from 128 to uh, 256 will be assigned a different copage. So IBM PC would have by default a code page, but um, maybe a Russian computer that is writing text could use some uh, code page to write a text uh, with circular character to be able to write Russian. Uh, but at the same time, if you want to write a text in Greek, you can use a uh, code page uh, 737. And the idea is that you can have multiple files with multiple code page, and you can switch between those. But with this type of implementation, uh, there's going to be a multiple problem. And one of the problem is, what if I want to transfer a file from one system to another? So um, now we're going to have uh, maybe a system that has a code page uh, 437. So thus Latin, the, basic, uh, the default one on IBM PC. And uh, if the same file is transferred maybe over the network or over a diskette, uh, then on a Russian computer that has maybe a cyclic default encoding, then suddenly uh, accent, straight, accent uh, character can be translated to different characters. So suddenly we're losing information and uh, this, the message is uh, transformed. So that's one issue, but also we cannot have at the same time in one text maybe a French description with quotation in Spanish or quotation in Cyrillic because uh, uh, it would be hard to switch or in a text file from one code page to another. So there are some basic big limitations to using ASCII. So as soon as we're doing communication or exchanging file, the more we exchange file, the more uh, these limitations uh, can be problematic. So the big solution for this, uh, there were multiple uh, IDs, but the main one that, that, that is still used today is Unicode. So Unicode is a standard that defines uh, both characters and encoding of uh, characters. So the first component is Unicode code points. And code points are uniquely indexed characters. So every character in every language will have uh, a unique code points. So the idea is that in a single uh, standard, we're going to index every character of every language, including a symbol, a measuring unit, and even a language that are not even used anymore, like the hieroglyph. And for example, uh, if we look at the third uh, character, the green one, which is a Japanese character uh, for water. This uh, 6C34, this is not necessarily the representation in bytes of this character. This is the index of this character in Unicode. So it's a unique number for the concept of this character. Uh, code points are not defining the way a character are encoded, but there will be multiple encoded that are defined by um, Unicode, and one of them, which is the most popular one, is uh, Unicode uh, transformation format 8, 8 for 8-bit. So uh, the interesting um, element with UTF-8 compared to ASCII is that now suddenly we have a variable length encoding, so we cannot think anymore as one character is one byte every time. It will be in some cases, so for all uh, ASCII 
uh, or Latin character, they will be equivalent to the ASCII uh, character. But any character that has a punctuation um, accent or a, a, any uh, other language other than English will be um, encoded di differently. So, um, yeah. And the way uh, the, we know the number of bytes used by each character, the first, the number of bits at the beginning of the first byte will define. So, for example, for two uh, bytes, we'll have 110 extra until to a maximum of six bytes with uh, 61 from by zero. So, as I mentioned, UTF 8 is the most popular. Uh, the, the chance that you see other encoding is pretty rare. Uh, at the moment, uh, web server, uh, even desktop are mainly using UTF-8. But we still need to keep in mind that uh, there can be some other encoding because uh, Windows for a, a long time was uh, by default uh, using ISO 8859. Even early version of uh, Windows 10 were using this encoding, which is basically um, ASCII with a code page that support um, character that are at accent for uh, French, Spanish, and a few other language. But uh, slowly, um, even now, uh, Windows is switching uh, to a default of UTF-8. I think it's in the past few years that they are uh, starting the switch for both um, the system and the console of the Windows. So what can happen if you uh, there is no encoding declared and you assume that it's UTF-8. So maybe you have a user that is uh, using Windows that is writing a text, uh, plain text uh, file. So it can be, for example, a CSV. CSV doesn't have uh, declare encoding by um, the way it's defined. So uh, your user is saving with um, its default text editor in ISO 8859. But if your system, so your web application is opening this file and thinking it's UTF-8, you will have uh, some character that will not be recognized because it's not encoded the way you think. So that was the uh, long introduction for basic concept of how, where Unicode came, came from and uh, what it, problem is it's solving. Now we know that Unicode is uh, encoding all character from every language. Uh, the thing is that character, the same character, same visual representation can be encoded different in different way with different Unicode uh, characters. So, for example, I've at the uh, at the top uh, right, you can see a few examples. So, the C capital C with Cizilla can be both written with a single character, but also with a capital C with a combining character that will include a Cizilla. A bit like the, the character on my title slide, which has a combining character, which is I on top of any character. Um, and the idea with normalization is we're gonna try to compare a Unicode string and see if they are actually uh, have the same meaning or are equivalent. So we'll have uh, NFC uh, normalization and NFC key. Uh, KC, sorry, uh, normalization. And um, there are actually two others that are really similar to those two. So I simplified a bit uh, for this presentation. And those normalization will happen in multiple uh, um, use case in your uh, web application or uh, library. So sometime library will uh, transform your input with, uh, and try to normalize them, maybe because they are building a URL and they are trying to make sure your host, the host name will be uh, valid or DNS friendly. Uh, Sometimes um, user path when the file are read are normalized to make sure uh, special character will be properly handled when we uh, request um, system API. Uh, Sometimes just to uh, some transformation of like the username or this type of data. It's also been used sometimes to generate slug because uh, the NFKC specific normalization will convert many characters to ASCII character. So sometimes people uh, will use it to um, basically um, transform 
special character to ASCII only uh, string. In practice, this is not intended for this. Uh, Unicode doesn't uh, clearly document uh, why those, in which use case it's safe to use normalization, but basically it's used in multiple uh, cases to uh, compare string or simplify the string to uh, comparable uh, format. So, uh, I already mentioned there is NFC and NFKC. So uh, the, the first C means canonical and because compatibility couldn't be just NFC, they add a K for compatibility. So it's a bit confusing, but what you need to remember is that NFC is a strict uh, comparison of equivalence that will have, uh, for example, will match the CCZilla as a character or uh, the decomposed version of it. But the compatibility mode will include, uh, it's a much more flexible comparison. So for example, uh, if we normalize the scripted H, uh, it will be equal, it will be uh, as a result, uh, capital H. So it will be equivalent if we uh, compare them to uh, the ASCII or Latin H. Uh, same for fraction, they will be decomposed. Uh, exponent will be also uh, decomposed. Um, Many measuring units will be converted to ASCII, um, um, ASCII uh, character. Also, there's ton of characters that are uh, just circle around a character that will become decomposed to just the ASCII uh, version of it. So, where is the security risk? So, so far I've done a, a big introduction on Unicode. I've started to to see that many API do normalization to help the potentially the developer or the user to have a valid input. Uh, it can have some side effect. And the first one, um, the OSPIT attack, which was uh, presented at Black Hat um, uh, late uh, the summer last year. Uh, so basically, we're going to have some character that will be converted to equivalent ASCII character and can, have, can create issue in URL or um, file path. And we have this uh, very visual example where uh, we're going to do maybe a redirection maybe for uh, OAP2 and we're validating that okay the domain to which we're redirecting are only subdomain for microsoft.com the thing is the attacker will use uh, a unicode character here uh, account of so this is the a slash c is a single unicode character but because um, in the location header browser used to uh, normalize this character to uh, a slash c so all in ascii so browser we're doing this uh, probably to help developer have valid url so they were doing a normalization uh, pass um, so it's, this is not an issue that was on the server side but uh, implicitly the uh, browser were uh, converting url to this so in the end, if we're redirecting uh, OAuth 2 with secret token, suddenly we can exfiltrate potentially uh, interesting values to our own domain that we control because we have just break uh, the URL and we're controlling those things. So a few other example with add symbol, uh, question mark, and uh, slash, uh, some uh, other example in compatibility mode. So uh, I hope I didn't uh, didn't miss too much. So uh, right after uh, showing a couple of examples of normalization, I just wanted to show a quick tool I built. It's an interactive uh, list of characters that can have interesting security implications. So um, if you uh, think that some application is doing some normalization on uh, some string or URL, you can uh, look at a character, for example, this exponent a i'm going to zoom into this if that's possible and uh basically it's explaining you okay this character uh zero a a uh, code point is convert to ascii a so 61 uh, and this is the way it's being encoded in different language it will look like this and uh you can also uh, there's a few options so uh, you can decide to hide a um, code section per language also, some character uh, transformation will not 
be effective in some language. Uh, and you can filter uh, if you only want to look at uh, NFC, which is the um, uh, canonical. So this is the more most uh, strict normalization. But as you can see, NFKC will have a bunch of characters to choose from if you need to uh, encode uh, some character to do some bypass something. And the search feature is can be used to uh, if you uh, need, you know uh, what character uh, you want to use, you can search, for example, K, which Unicode character can potentially be convert uh, in transit by some uh, library or some function uh, to uh, as key character or so. Some, uh, in some cases, it will not only be uh, as key character, so sometimes there will be an apostrophe after the, um, the letter, but um, the idea is all those Unicode characters can be translated to ASCII if the specific transformation is applied. So that was for the quick example. Uh, I'll paste the link in Twitch uh, right after this presentation. So if you want to play with it uh, and search for it, search for characters, and uh, also to test the application in like, the context of pen tests or uh, even bug bounty. So, uh, general recommendation, if you are doing CVD check, uh, make sure you do normalization before there's any CVD check. Uh, because if you do a validation and, for example, look for a blacklist, there is no uh, the keyword X. But um, there is, after the CVD check, a normalization that could generate the, the keyword X. You can have a bypass. Uh, review the library you're using, especially if you have a critical application that is doing some validation on host name or, or stuff like that. Uh, maybe the HTTP library you're using or the network library could do some normalization and you don't know about it. So you can test it with um, uh, the character I'm uh, providing in the list. So again, prefer general security uh, rule of thumbs. Prefer whitelist over blacklist if it's possible. And uh, yeah, do strict validation at the source. So I'm going to jump to a case modification, which is uh, pretty similar to a uh, normalization. Uh, you're going to see. So a case modification will be every time we do two uppercase or two lowercase um, transformation. So uh, Unicode define the behavior for uh, every character, what will, should be the result for uh, the uppercase and lowercase transformation. So for this reason, uh, almost all language will have the, the same behavior. I've noticed that uh, Go and C Sharp uh, do have a more limited uh, a subset of characters that can become ASCII. Um, so it's uh, there are a few that are not covered in both in Go and uh, C Sharp. But aside from that, uh, Ruby, Java, PHP, uh, most of them have the same behavior as defined in uh, the Unicode standard. Also, not all characters will have variants. So, um, if you apply uppercase to some special characters, sometimes they will not have any variation. But many characters will have um, will uh, redirect to the same character. So, for example, um, we're going to see uh, an example in a moment. But uh, the Kelvin degree. So, for the temperature, the Kelvin uh, symbol. Uh, if you apply the lowercase uh, transformation, it will become a lowercase. K, like uh, the ASCII uh, Latin character. So if we apply uh, uppercase uh, transformation to lowercase a, it's pretty obvious, no surprise, it becomes uh, capital A. But uh, it's interesting to know that there's a few uh, other characters, which are also on the same application that I, that I just present, that will become ASCII characters. So this German B will become SS, so capital S. And this is because it's part of the German language. This is the way the language works. Uh, there's not uh, the, the capital B, like this one doesn't exist. It's uh, written uh, with two S. Uh, same with this uh, FI character, that is a ligature of uh, F and I. It becomes uh, capital F and capital I, uh, which is, if you compare it to the, the string FI, would be equal. Lowercase will have completely different character that will have uh, this behavior. So uh, character that have impact on uppercase transformation does necessarily have the same repercussion with lowercase transformation. 
but k will work um, and uh, so if we do a lowercase of the uh, 24 to a character which is the kelvin uh, degree symbol it will become uh, 6b which is uh, ascii uh, k so if you're comparing uh, o's and your one of your o's could be a uh, facebook ikea or vk i don't know uh, you can possibly uh, put uh, 21 at uh, 2a if you're trying to uh, bypass the filter there's also so this uh, turkish character that can become uh, lowercase i along with some apostrophe. So uh, there should be a dash um, right above uh, the i, but basically it's a dot less i, but with a dot on top of it. So PowerPoint is not rendering properly, but uh, so it's not exactly as key, but sometimes um, it could be enough if uh, the second part is later truncate truncated or removed. So again, uh, potential issue will be similar to a normalization. So if you're doing a critical security check on strings and you have done uh, two uppercase or uh, two lowercase on your value before doing the security check, uh, this can cause some issues. Uh, it can be used also to bypass uh, WAP or filters, so similar to uh, normalization. So, Quick example, so if we're uh, maybe looking for uh, is the current role or the current user equal to admin, we might not be in the application able to register uh, an admin user, but we might be able to uh, register ADM with um, dot less i uh, m. And this character, once the uppercase transformation will be applied, will be uh, equal to this uh, admin in the uh, all in ASCII characters. So um, another example, uh, this is a Java code uh, of a class doing uh, OS validation in TLS communication. Uh, so here we have two variables, uh, name and templates. So name uh, will be the, the host to which we're connecting and template will be the host name, uh, which uh, the library has extracted from a certificate. But because two lowercase is applied, then uh, we could have a malicious certificate that would have um, a Kelvin K, for example, in host name. And uh, the Kelvin uh, degree would be uh, tra transposed to a lowercase K in this case, and could be uh, used to bypass this host uh, verification. We have this uh, also this uh, recent penalty in Django, uh, where uh, this is a password a reset functionality where um, basically the email was uh, doing a weak comparison uh, with I think lowercase and um, in the end the, the the problem here is that first there's a weakness in the comparison of the email with the database uh, that is storing the, the, the user but it's sending an email to the original email uh, in the form that was uh, uh, submit and because of this, uh, we could have, uh, uh, we're trying to impersonate maybe super admin and we're going to register a, a super admin account with uh, i that is uh, dot less i. Here, uh, the feasibility and the actual exploitability might not be possible if we cannot, we don't manage to have SMTP server that receive this email. So I'm not 100% sure it can be possible um, um, on a real application. But this is a guarantee that was patched in the Django. And the fix was, uh, they, they changed the comparison, but it's not uh, this that is doing uh, the, the, completely the, the completely mitigating the, the problem here. Uh, what they have done is that instead they are extracting the email again from the database, from this user, to make sure they uh, are using an email that they are trusting uh, in the first place, so a value from the database. So uh, mitigation similar to uh, normalization. So, um, but here uh, in most language and library, when they are doing security critical check, they will have a custom function that are making sure that lowercase are only applied to uh, ASCII character. This is something I've seen in the GDK, for example, in Java and a few other library. In C-sharp, they have a safe function that is a two lowercase invariant 
Uh, so if you want to do a, a case insensible check, you can use this function. It would be safe. OK, so I'm uh, having a, I'm told that I'm almost done with time. So I'm going to quickly uh, go through uh, the encoding bypass for uh, WAF. But I'm going to have to skip the small two section for um, the data integrity and the punical visual, which was uh, just only a couple of slides. So WAF uh, will be a system in between your client and your web application or your system. And the idea is that we'll encode in a way so that uh, the firewall that, that is uh, looking for specific string will not see the malicious pattern and reach the web application. So UTF-8 is pretty common, but Unicode is defining a few other encoding that might be supported on your system. Uh, one interesting one is UTF-16. Uh, UTF-16 uh, has a system um, of byte order mark meaning that even if your default encoding is UTF-8, um, if you define in your text file, maybe XML file, uh, byte order mark for uh, UTF-16, automatically the XML parser will switch to uh, UTF-16. So this can be useful um, if you have uh, something in between that is looking for malicious XML payload, uh, you can encode it with um, in UTF-16 both uh, Little onion or big onion. So a quick example here uh, of uh, how this file would look. So this is a, a XML document encoded in UTF-16. So we can see there are some uh, byte order mark at the beginning, and every character is taking two bytes. In practice, if you open this on your editor or uh, the way the, your application would see it, it would be as a regular XML document. XML also has another option, specifically if it's uh, XML documents. Uh, in XML, you can define uh, in the first declaration node uh, the encoding. And from this, it will switch to uh, this encoding. Uh, so even if your uh, parser is, is, uh, your, is being specified, use uh, this encoding. It can be switched also this way. The screenshot is showing an interesting parser, which is a libxml2 in a C. And what's interesting is that the encoding is switching right after the attribute instead of the end of tags, the first declaration tag. So this is a, an interesting behavior. But in the end, it's going to be the same principle. Uh, we just want to uh, bypass maybe uh, we have some malicious path that we're using or malicious method that we're using in our XML payload to do an XXC or some type of RC. But because we're uh, including it in UTF-16, we might be able to bypass some filters. So I need to quickly mention that uh, while uh, UTF-16 can be a useful uh, resources for bypassing filter, there might be some uh, easier ways with uh, XML entities, double encoding, non-printable character in the case of bypassing XSS, for example, uh, because browser often truncate a non-printable character. But uh, yeah, I just need to mention it. It's maybe a bit out of scope, but I need to mention it because it's probably an easier avenue in most case. And uh, the last uh, element I want to show for uh, implication of Unicode in um, uh, to bypass filter, there is a, a common bypass for XSS filter in .NET. So this is less. Um, uh, an actual thing because uh, .NET Core has dropped its XSS filter. But um, basically, uh, in um, most .NET applications, we'll use SQL Server. Uh, and SQL Server, or maybe the client library, I'm not sure which component is doing uh, normalization. But if you are um, having a column that is uh, nvarchar, um, depending on the collation, so the encode, different encoding of your database, character might be convert to uh, ASCII character. So in this case, we're inserting an image source, but with the character FF1C. And, but the way it will be stored, it will be the ASCII uh, character. Um, so in practice, we'll have our store XSS, and it will uh, render as, the, as on the, the right. So I'll have to skip uh, the two last section 
which are pretty quick. It was just a quick uh, example of the Funicode FX. So for example, here, uh, N with underscore, uh, with a small dot under, um, few recommendation and make sure if you are doing conversion that, um, because in some language character will be truncated or replaced with unknown one. So make sure uh, if you're migrating or doing backups that character are properly saved. So, and uh, I'll be sharing um, the link to the slides. So if you want to, to see the uh, last couple of slides or uh, see the resource that I've mentioned along the way, uh, they, these will be published on uh, this URL. So I'll paste it uh, right after on the Twitch streams. But uh, yeah, or you can uh, visit it right now. So it's at gosecure.github.io slash presentation if you want to get the slides. Uh, welcome back. So we have one question here. It says, does this allow, uh, sorry, I'm getting a little bit tired. Does this also work in certificates? Would it be possible to spoof a valid certificate by using Unicode characters like Kelvin K, for example? Yes, okay. Um, so basically the, the code that I've showed was an example of a Unicode reality. So this is a specific reality of a specific language, I would say. Um, this is currently patched, but uh, the reality is not officially released. So that's why I didn't put a CVE or anything specific. But uh, the reason it's not that critical to show it uh, in this presentation is that in order to do full TLS um, uh, interception, you will need more than just bypassing all thing verification. So for example, if you want to make in the middle uh, Android application or a uh, basically uh, any type of client, uh, you need to have a certificate that would be signed by root authorities. So, but uh, yes, the, in the case of uh, the code that I've shown, uh, the scenario was uh, you could craft a certificate with uh, a Unicode character in the common name. So it's not possible in the out, uh, out name uh, section of the certificate, but because the subject is supporting uh, Unicode strings, you can have this type of uh, domain. But, but the big limitation, again, that is missing to have a full manual of any Java application uh, in TLS is you would need to be able to have a sign, author, uh, an authority that would sign your certificate. And uh, so far uh, th that I know, uh, all uh, certificate authorities are a pretty strict role, uh, rule at uh, validating your uh, certificate. So it would not be possible uh, this way, but if you are uh, having an internal uh, certificate authorities, uh, this would be a far-fetched but uh, possible attacks. Makes sense. So, you know, but yes, it would be possible to, for, for example, add Facebook with a Kelvin a degree as a K, and because, and, and you would put this in malicious certificate that is returned to the client, and because the client will compare uh, with a prior to that a lower case operation, uh, then those name would match. But again, this certificate would need to be signed by some authorities. So, so it could be a scenario that you have uh, somebody, uh, maybe a country or highly uh, motivated attacker that, that knows about uh, a root authorities that want to hide from the transparency log because uh, organizations are actively monitoring certificates that are generated with their domain. So it could be a way to maybe uh, bypass it, but it's kind of not probable, so, but yeah. Still possible, but not but, probable. No. Yeah, Let's... But there's, there will be an article soon, as soon as the, the reality is published, uh, there will be more detail about it, but uh, yeah. Cool, on the Go Secure blog? Yes. <laughs> uh, we have another, um, Cute question. Uh, somebody asks, uh, what's your favorite favorite Unicode code point? <laughs> I, I would say the, the most common one is uh, K, so Kel Kelvin, because it's working both with uh, the uh, normalization form uh, canonical, so NFC, and it's also working with two lower case, because uh, when comparison are insensitive of cases, it's in general, developer will choose two lower case, which has a bit less character uh, uh, available. 
but uh, yeah, uh, I would tell you, uh, it, you don't need to, when you do code review, you just find the operation that is done and you look at the characters that are possible. But if you are testing blindly, I would say K is one uh, the one to start with. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's do one last one. Uh, to your knowledge, are such transformations included by commercial scanners such as BERT? Uh, I don't think so, because even in code review, it's a uh, lowercase and uppercase are pretty common, uh, but it really needs to be in security critical um, uh, components. But it could actually, but it's more, we're looking mainly for logic flaws. So if you're bypassing maybe a SSRF filter, so to bypass a, a filter that to, to be able to reach specific domain or host, uh, it, it's theoretically possible, but uh, it will be limited. Okay. Well, we're out of time, a little bit late. Thank you very much, Philip, for your presentation. It was great. Let's uh, give a big round of applause on Twitch chat. Philip Arto, and uh, we'll be back really shortly with the last presentation uh, of the day. Stay with us, please, and uh, peace.